Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Brun. On this episode, Vincent LaRusso and I are going to be taking a look back at the KISS Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. It's hard to believe, but that took place 10 years ago this month. We're going to talk all about the speeches, what it was like being in the building that night, the other people being inducted that night, and so much more. Lots to cover in this episode. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. So let's jump in. And let's get started. Everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Bryan. Today, I'm excited to welcome back to my show, <laughs> the man with plenty of dances already. <laughs> oh, you say you're, you're excited. I am very excited. After all these episodes that we've done, you still get excited about having get, me on? You, you know, I, I text you and I say, come on, you want to do an episode? Or you text me, hey, we haven't done one. I still get thoroughly excited over it. You're like a pointer sister. I'm so excited. <laughs> I was like, I'm like a point assistant, but then I realized the reference. <laughs> I like that. You took about a you know a, a second and a half to, to figure out what I was saying. Right, but then right. I was like, oh please. You know. <laughs> well, usually, usually I'm right right there with you within a second. But yeah, that mm -hmm. one that one had to marinate an extra half a second. A little, a little bit, yeah. 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 So how's everything going for you, bloody? Good, good. Everything's good. Good. Thanks I'm excited so. to do the show, even though I barely know what we're gonna talk about, but Damn, I don't believe that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I texted you and I said, I can't believe that it's the 10 year anniversary of Kiss's induction into the Rock and Roll <laughs> Hall of Fame. And just just let that sit for a moment. 10 years. That's freaking amazing to me. I can't believe I, it's a decade I already. I can't even. You know, when the, when the Facebook memories come up of different things in your life, yep. I really hate those things. Because <laughs> it just really... <laughs> It really just makes you realize how fast time is going by. Yep. Um, I mean, does it feel like 10 years? No. Does it feel more like five or six? Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I agree. You know, it doesn't feel like it was a couple of years ago, but, yeah. you know, it feels like a couple of years before COVID. You know, that's what it feels like to me. Right. But yeah. 10? No. Yeah. Well, when I, when I began to, and something came up on my news feed about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and I was like, I think that was 2014. I did a quick Google search because I was like, I can't be. That couldn't have been 2014. I can't be 10 yeah. years. And then when I saw I was right, I was like, God damn. Yep. <laughs> so yep. thinking about it this way, that's just a little less than 20% of your lifetime ago. All right. You here to make me depressed or are you here to do a show? <laughs> oh. huh. Huh. Uh, you're going to be like, all right, thank you. Click. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, do you remember the whole lead up to the rock and roll hall of fame. And obviously we found out that kiss after, you know, what, 20 something years of being eligible, finally got um, inducted, right. We knew that they were nominated and all the drama leading up to it, who's going to perform, who wasn't going to mm. perform. Ace, I think went on Eddie trunk show to say, you know, he wasn't performing Paul with yep. all the comments and the media, you know, yep. looking back on that, I mean, we were 10 years away. Um, any opinions or thoughts on all of that drama leading up to tonight? <laughs> Yeah, I just didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I I knew. I think we both knew when we were gonna when we were in the building that Kiss was not going to perform at that point. Right you now, we had heard that they were not happy that they didn't include you know Bruce, Bruce and Vinny and Eric and both Eric's. Yeah, and well, it's a bit um, hard to include Eric Carr. Well, we could include him. Well, they I could mean, have had the, the Eric Carr avatar. It could have been 10 years ahead of his well, time. Well, true, true. But he, he could have still been inducted, even though he's, he's, he's yes, God rest his soul. Right. right. <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> but I think we were still like, there's rumors like there was going to be a jam at the end or there was going right. to be something. And 
and then we'll start getting into the you know the torturous part of the the, the evening yes, for, yeah. for you and I yes. but um but uh, yeah I, I I just remember you know just being still happy that finally our guys were going to be you know in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame despite so many people not wanting them in there and it's just like a big you know to the industry you right. know yeah and since then you know the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has become even more so the Rock and Roll Hall of Shame, in my opinion. But, mm -hmm. but that's a that's a discussion for another for another day. No, but, uh, but, but I do um, want to. But, but I do want to just. So d you're saying at that time it did matter to you that they were being inducted, right? Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember very very vividly um, when I used to hang out with um, during lunch with my friends that uh, we I used to go to a cigar shop. We just used to hang out. We used to name bands that we could not believe were in the right. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And some of them were really obvious choices. Like at by at that time, I think it was like people like you know Chicago and you know the likes of those bands. And there's still some bands like I think Boston and Ario Speedwagon. And I think Foreign has finally got nominated this year. They're nominated, I but I don't yeah, know if they're going right. to be inducted. Which right. is which is still you know ludicrous that they're not mm -hmm. in. But you know there's there were so many other bands at that time who there were a lot of them like now are are in. But yep. um, but it was always like an active discussion and. And Kiss was always a part of that discussion. Sure, sure. For me, obviously. Of course. Oh, absolutely. And look, hard rock has always been, I'll say, somewhat ignored by the hard rock. I mean, yes, it's gotten a little bit better, but a band only because like of the fan vote. Only because of the fan vote. Yeah, but the fan vote only counts for like one out of five hundred votes. But I think even oh, though it, it only counts, okay. yeah, it only counts as one of five hundred votes or something like that. Maybe even one of a thousand. But I do think it applies pressure on the hall yeah. when they see what the general public wants yeah, you know? it's, it's embarrassing you know you're going to yeah. see a staggering number by the fans and i don't remember you may remember where kiss finished that year as far as fan vote were they number one in the i fan think vote? they were number one in the fan vote yeah, okay yeah yeah you know and and as ravenous as kiss fans are as we are right. um i you know we were very passionate about them them getting in yes you know and and kiss had always been like oh who gives a you know we, we don't we don't need no rock we've always been hated by the critics you know we know this is like run by rolling stone-esque you know <laughs> uh executives who who never we, they were never the media darling thank god for like cream magazine back in yep. the 70s for the for kiss you know so but it's still it, i i wanted them more like i said in the rock and roll hall of fame not so much for like kiss getting in but just so the, the big this to the to the industry just to, like yeah. yeah you know what i mean it just I, but don't get For those who are only listening and not watching what he's referring to is the middle finger <laughs> just yes. like, oh, so i always forget about that yeah no, just yeah. just in case i don't want to use the i don't i didn't want to use the f word you know hey. I, don't, I don't know if there's any you know censorship or any you know you're free to use although, any words you want although uh, although i will say this this coffee is fucking delicious that i'm drinking so. <laughs> there you go f word where it's appropriate <laughs> okay respectfully uh, yeah. respectful f word yeah, yeah there you go yeah. Yeah, no, I look, I agree with you. Um, you know, to me, I remember going that night and being <laughs> excited. And we'll talk about us going. <laughs> I already know what you're thinking about. Um, but I, I just yeah. remember being excited. And I agree with you. The drama leading up to it with Ace and all of his comments and Paul, it seemed like every 15 minutes he was on another news thing talking about, you know, all all the things that are wrong with the rock call. Mm -hmm. Um, I wish those things had not happened leading up to it. But yeah. When they were scanning my ticket and I was walking in the Barclays Center that night, none of that mattered to me at that moment. I was, as we like to say, thoroughly. Toed. Toed, I, yes. I was a 10 out of 10 toes that night. You know? yeah. So, yeah. Um, and for all the reasons that you're saying right now, you know, for decades we heard about how Kiss wasn't a real rock band, this, that, and, you know, there was all these different comments. And, um, like you said, it was like the middle finger to the industry. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that's Tom Morello said, and we'll talk about a speech in a moment. The Kiss fans were right and the critics were wrong. And, and he's so, mm. that is so yeah. spot on. And that like, yeah. that just really summarizes how I felt walking in that building that night. It was like, you know, at that point, 40 years of fandom for me, it was 45 for the band that they were around. And I felt like there was some kind of validation, even though I agree with you, the Rock Hall to some degree is a sham, right? But there yeah. was still something that just like, validates it for some reason well, i don't know why <laughs> well just remember let's just also not forget they're still rubbing elbows with the beatles and the stones and the who yes. and 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 the the ones who we really i mean, in my opinion really respect the led zeppelins you know right. who, who who belong in the in the rock rock and yes. roll rock yes. and roll <laughs> all fame not hip-hop 
you know, not I uh, don't let me get on don't let me get started. <laughs> not you know, but not country. Yeah. God bless Dolly Parton. She handled that like yes. the way it should have been handled. Yes. You know? Yes. But Although anyways, obviously they turned her down. <laughs> you yes. Know, and yes. still inducted her. But um Right, exactly. But at yes. least she stood up and basically said, Why am I going into the rock and roll hall of fame? I'm a country yeah. artist. To my so, knowledge, so, so, I, so I can't think get... of any other artist that ever did that. That said, "I'm yeah, not so, rock and roll. Why am yeah, I going so in?" Does Kiss have a chance to in the in the country hall of fame? Did they? Did is Hard Luck Woman somewhat than like a, a country song? So maybe <laughs> maybe they'll maybe they'll get a nod. I mean, come on, it's ridiculous, you know that whole thing. That, but that, I don't disagree. Although I don't get yeah. hung up on that. It's to me, it's a name. Um, I know it bothers a lot of people. I don't get hung up on that, but I understand yeah. why it bothers other people. But I'm going to ask know, this question again. I know it always says, is Brian yeah. Adams in the rock and roll? Hall of fame? No, he's not. No, okay. he's not. <laughs> hey, come on. I mean, right. fucking... right. uh, and, but, and you but, know, but, but, I but, never, and, until you asked me, I never thought of the fact that he wasn't <laughs> in the hall of fame and how, you know, love he his wrote music the summer of 69. <laughs> he wrote the summer of 69. Well, he's got a Do decade go of hits. Again? He's got you know, probably yeah. more than a decade of hits. He's got and, he's, you know, and, he's, and again, I don't want to pick on Cheryl Crow again. Right, right, right. I, I like I have I have her records, whatever. Yeah. Good artist, you know, female. I don't want to put anybody down. But come on. Right. Brian Adams show, in my humble opinion, who had more of an impact on the industry, I feel it's more Brian Adams, you know. Um, look, I think you can make a case either way, but the fact that they're comparable and one's in and one's not blends to the problem. And one all. started before one. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. Brian Adams' first record was what, 82? Something, Something like, like that. that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Shush. Quoted <laughs> Norton. <laughs> oh, man. But you know what? Going back to just with Kiss being inducted, I think also, <laughs> there we go. We got, yeah. we, we got them all I'm fired up. <laughs> you know, every time this comes up, about it. <laughs> You know, you got to put a disclaimer at the beginning. You're not allowed to talk about Brian Adams. You got to. You should put a thing right across. There will be no discussion of Brian Adams during this podcast. Thank you. Oh, uh, man. But anyways, no, all right. I, I think the reason why also it was important to me that they get inducted is, you know, again, put into the side what our personal feeling, feelings are on the hall. I think for the average music fan, not the big diehard music fans like you and I, but the average music fan sees that hall as the end all be all. Uh -huh. And to me, when they go there, I wanted Kiss represented. Mm -hmm. That this way, the average person, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years from now, is like, oh, yeah, I've heard of that band, Kiss. Now, I wish that Kiss had, you know, donated some more of their stuff so that when you're actually in that damn building, you could see things from them besides just the plaque that shows the four of them that was. Well, that might happen later on when God rest their souls, they're not here anymore. They might. You know, there might be some sort of, you know, and for I future hope so. generation. For future I hope so. Right. If for that exact reason, you know, um, it, it's not about validating it at that point for you and I, but it's yeah. for my kids, my kids, kids who may go there. And look, for all of us rock fans that say, you know, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a sham and all of that. I from the people I know, nine out of 10 rock fans that go to Cleveland still go to the Hall of Fame. Of course. They still say, oh, I want to check it out, even though, and they, you know, they qualify it, but they still go to that damn building. And we went, we went after they got inducted, uh, correct my memory? Yeah, yeah, we correct went, my memory. yeah, no, no, we, we went, we, I think, what was it, 2018, right? We went right, to Gene right. Simmons' first Gene Simmons. solo show in 2018. Now, now, when we were there, do you remember seeing any Kiss? The, there uh, was two, I think there was, if I remember right, Peter Chris, like, like mm. his arm things and his makeup his, kit or something makeup like kit. that. Yeah, that's and right, that was yeah. it. And that yeah. was it. There was really nothing. Well, else I could understand the kids really never put out any merchandise, so they probably couldn't find that's anything true. else. <laughs> that's that's a good point. <laughs> and they weren't Very a visual scarce. band. Yeah, but wasn't scarce. a visual. <laughs> exactly. It's like finding fuck it's like finding fucking Bigfoot, you know what that's I mean? Right. Oh, Six man. million dollar man. Oh man. Anyway. <laughs> That is that is very very true, but um so so for those reasons you know even ten years later and I still can't believe it's ten years I look back and I'm like I'm so glad that they were inducted and look for all of the nonsense that Paul spewed in the media beforehand it was never lost on me that in the I think it was 2016 hmm. tour when they were touring before one of the songs Paul would announce every night. You're looking at a band that's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I used to think all the time to myself, man, for someone who trashed that place just two mm. years ago, he's certainly building this up every night on tour that kisses in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So let me ask you this. For all the bands out there that criticize the hall before they are in, do you think deep down inside they really want to be inducted? Yes. 
except for the Sex Pistols. I truly believe they did not want oh, to be yeah, talked to for different reasons. I agree. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. Yeah, I think majority would, you know. Yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah. So when when you see these artists and bands saying, you know, hey, we don't want to be inducted, don't induct us, blah, 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 blah. I think it's just coming from a position of them being hurt. And, Absolutely. and feeling like they they deserve to be there but but again why would you not want to be in a place with i said where the artists that i you know mentioned earlier yeah you know so yeah, yeah. You know. i agree so look leading up to that night also i remember there was talk about who was going to do the induction speech and there was mm. all different speculation. I think at one point people thought, you know, could somebody like Nikki Six maybe do it? And then, you know, maybe somebody who's already in the hall that that's a, a classic rock artist would do it. And then it was announced Tom Morello was going to give the speech. And I remember for myself, I'm going to be flat out honest. I was like, are you kidding me? Tom mm. Morello? Really? Mm. Really, yeah. Tom Morello? Do you remember, Don't not the speech itself, but just do you remember your thought or reaction when they said 10 years ago that Tom was going to be the one doing the induction speech? Or did you yeah, not I, really think about it? I, I mean, I was certainly surprised. Yeah. I was certainly surprised. You know, I had realized that there were a lot of guitar players, musicians that were very much influenced by Kiss. Yeah. I didn't remember at that time him being mentioned as one of them. Agreed. You know, I, I, I mean, there was a lot of other guys who, who were mentioned um so yeah i was definitely surprised uh when it was when it was tom yep yeah so was i so now that was my initial reaction like i said it was like tom morello really really mm -hmm. that's who? and i was very disappointed when that announcement was made i looked back 10 years ago god damn they picked the best freaking person to give that induction speech to me yeah. i will still to this day every three to six months watch the induction speech not even the the guy's speeches of accepting the induction mm. i will watch tom morello's speech because i think he hit the nail on the head and you mm. were talking about how you were so happy that kiss was inducted because it was like the big middle finger to, to the industry mm -hmm. and i feel like he just nailed that in a polite way but mm -hmm. basically that's mm -hmm. what he was saying he's you know mm -hmm. and he, talking about impact influence awesomeness and, and just how kiss deserved to be there and for all of the wrong opinion I had beforehand about Tom giving yeah. that speech, if there's one thing I could say I'm most thankful for for that night, it's that Tom Morello gave that induction speech. I think he hit it out of the damn park. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is, when somebody makes a speech, and for a band like Kiss, you want it to really be articulated of why yes. they should <laughs> be there. And if you had any doubts after his speech... For those who was maybe was a cat, oh, they're well, the clown band. They don't, you know. right. And then go back and do your little research or go back and listen to the band, you know, yep. understand why. That's, you know, the kind of impact that speech had. And, and yes. you're right about that. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I knew he was an articulate guy. I knew he was a smart yes. guy. Yep. You know, I had, I had, I had uh, at least two or three of the Rage Against the Machine records. I, okay. I liked them. Mm -hmm. I was a fan of theirs from the early, uh, early to mid 90s when I kind of finally got out of that hair metal thing and I was, you know, begrudgingly listening to Soundgarden <laughs> at first. Uh -huh. And, you know, my brother was the one who said, oh, you got to check out these guys. But um, but yeah, I, it was definitely a surprise. And then and then I was pleasantly surprised in yes. the end, you know, <laughs> yeah. so mm -hmm. definitely it was yeah. a good choice. I agree. Now, what about the band members speeches? Do you remember? I you know it's 10 years and maybe you haven't watched on the Internet the way I do sometimes. But do you remember? Does anything stick out to you on those? Not so much individually. Mm -hmm. I was more curious to see how they were going to be together, right. collectively, interacting, because we we still knew there was issues there. Like I said, right? all that drama leading up to right. beforehand. Yep. Right. But I was glad, because I've seen other ones. I mean, I, I've i seen um, when Blondie, for Blondie. instance, was, mm -hmm. was, yeah, <laughs> which that was incredibly uncomfortable. Yes. Where the guy's like, please, please let us play, please. <laughs> I mean, not that he was playing, but it was just it was so awkward and yes. uncomfortable and She's like, oh, we I have a band over already, you know. It's just, I that was not very well done that whole thing or the, how that whole thing went down. I was just like, please, no more drama tonight. Let them all be up there. Let it, them look happy. They all yeah. looked happy. They smiled. No one was rolling their eyes. Right. And they hugged each other, or whatever they did, and they handled that whole thing professionally, being on the stage. Yeah. So I was very, very happy about that. Absolutely. And you know, I don't want to ruin the moment of them being on that stage because 
because you know we're waiting however many years it was you do better at the math than me um was it how many years at it was that, what, that point? 2000 2000 was the last time that they had all been together on stage so you're looking at probably 14 years right so you just wanted that moment to really be yeah. you know uh pleasant you know and 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 just enjoy and you know um so i was happy about that for sure yeah, no, I, I, look, I agree with you. And I remember Gene being very complimentary towards both Ace and Peter. I think Gene said something like, you know, no, nobody bangs the, the drums or nobody plays the sticks the way Peter does, you know, and, um, you know, he he mentioned Ace, you know, he called out each guy by name. But, you know, I just remember Gene being very complimentary, which to me, I guess, is not a total surprise, because I think when push comes to shove, I think even during the farewell tour or the end of the road tour, I think if it was up to Gene, Ace and Peter would have had a role in that tour. Just my opinion. I could be wrong. You know, we mm -hmm. know that Gene, a few years later, had Ace at some of his vault experiences. Peter showed up at one of his vault experiences. And even Peter had said something along the lines of, you know, hey, I had to be here for Gene. You know, of all the members in the band, I think he said something like, you know, I have the biggest spot in my heart for Gene. So I just get the impression if it was up to Gene, he would have had those guys involved. Well, and to me, that night, he kind of spread that love around a little bit. Well, I think, too, as we've come to and we've talked about in the past, how we always thought like Gene was the asshole right. and Paul was like the cool whatever. As we've come to understand more as Gene, I mean, who was the one who roomed with 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 uh, Gene? Was it Ace? No, it was, Peter. Always talk about? it was Peter. Oh, Peter Wood? OK, all yeah, right. Because I and remember was... at, at the vault thing, they them uh, Peter saying like, oh, Gene and I had like this Twinkie thing. And, Twinkie, Gene, right. was, <laughs> and yeah. Gene was like, he means the cakes. He means yeah, the right, cakes. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that was classic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Funny. You know. You know, uh, it's funny because I was just watching something today um, on um, there's a Bon Jovi documentary that's coming yep. out on Hulu. I think it may be next month. Or the end of, I think at the end of April. Yep. And so from what I understand and and, and watching just uh, a couple of YouTube videos, you know, Richie and, and John didn't they were never together in the same room. Um, they didn't collaborate on it. You know, John Bon Jovi was very much like, do whatever you need to do. Go talk to yep. Richie. You know, I'm not getting in the way. I want this to be truthful, whatever. And and there was some dialogue or some quotes about, you know, about Richie, who, you know, had to leave because of family things. And, you know, and John was saying, you know, I know him since I'm I'm a, as a childhood, you know, friend. And, yep. you know, there's always going to be a love there. And, you know, and so my point being of bringing up that, you know, when when people, they have their disagreements, their arguments, they come in and out of people's lives. When you're so heavily involved in somebody's life, especially when you've created something, and you could debate till you know till the end of time whether or not Kiss would have been as big as they if they would have had you know a different drummer or a different guitar player, the fact that matters is what we know. Right. The drum grooves and the guitar parts, the solos, the signature things, as Ace and Peter. Yep. That doesn't mean they couldn't have made it with the concept and the whole that thing, but they all contributed to it. Even if even if Gene and Paul were, say, 60 percent or 70 percent of the brains or even 80 percent, even that other 20 percent that could have been Peter. And I'm just throwing out numbers. Right, of course. 20 percent was Peter and Ace. Mm -hmm. It's still it was something that led to them being the success that they were. Right. Oh, so absolutely. that's that's my opinion. So um, I think it, it, it was it. I, I agree with you as far as the whole thing with Gene. And I think these guys, even Paul. Because he, Paul can be very kind of standoffish about, it, especially mm -hmm. when somebody, you know, we talked about this. Somebody does him wrong, it's like dumb. There you're yep. done, you know. Yep. But you know, deep down, I think if you ever got Paul on the side, I mean, look, he did that thing with Ace, you know, that uh, when he did the for the Origins, uh, yeah. the, the 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 free song, whatever I forgot the, the name. Fire and it. water. Fire water. Yeah. yeah. He did that thing, you know. Yep. So. You know, all we want is, as Kiss fans is to see these guys unite and be happy together. Absolutely. You know, it's like so. And, and I think that's one of the good things about the Kiss machine kind of coming somewhat to a halt now is that we don't get all this stuff in the media anymore about this, you know, that's the ongoing point. thing. And let, and let Ace be happy and let Ace put out his records, you know, and, and the band Gene and uh, Paul should be happy for the guy. Or what, whatever is that. Just be happy that he's still happy and doing his thing. And that's it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, look, I 100% agree with you. It is kind of sad, though. I mean, you and I were in the building that night, and I was like, thankfully. But it is kind of sad to think that that is very probably the last time the four of them will be on a stage together in public. I know they weren't performing, but I can't imagine the four of them doing a public appearance together anymore. 
I would like to think it's not. I don't think they're ever really going to play again together. Right. Agree. You know, um, but I would like to think that there'd be something in the future that would bring them together. You know, but I'm hard to pressed to see. think of what that is. I know because it's nothing bigger than a, an induction to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. There's no other exactly, exactly. You know, unless you know, baseball decides to put them in Cooperstown just as for shits and giggles. But <laughs> that's not, uh, that, they have nothing to do with that. But um, uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah um, I, I, you know, or maybe, come on, you know, listen, you know, and I know firsthand when, when, when you reach a point in your life that you realize your own mortality and mm -hmm. you get older, you know, maybe there'll be a t point in time when they'll be like, you know, you know, it's just, let's just get I, together, the four of us and let, let bygones be bygones. I when they hope get, maybe, you're right. You know? I no. hope you're right. And look, maybe I can see a situation where like Paul and Ace get together kind of on the down low, just to even just hang out and have lunch or something like that. Um, I just have a hard time seeing the four so, of them in a room. I know. But here's the thing, you know, Paul and Gene could complain about as much as, yeah. oh, Peter, when he came, the reunion, oh, the pain in my ass oh, with the money and, oh, Ace put the drugs and whatever the hell was going on. The yeah. bottom line is, think about Kiss in 1996. Yeah. Where were they going? If they didn't do that reunion tour. Of course. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So absolutely. deep down, they know, believe me, they know <laughs> oh, their course. success. And this is probably what digs at them a little bit, or more so maybe Paul than Gene. Right. It's like, I could be mad at them as much as I want, but you know what? If it wasn't for those two guys, we would not have <laughs> had the success and the rebirth. Because if anything, you know, Kiss got stronger. And I don't know if they were more popular than they were in 77, 78 at that point in time. I feel like, like they were. I mean, think right. about it. In 77, I'll just use New York as an example since that's where we're from. In 77, December of 77, they played three nights at the Garden. Yeah. In 96, they played four nights at the Garden. Well, yeah. let's, here's, here's how I can kind of prove that without proving it. Uh -huh. In During the, re, the reunion tour, people like you and I, right? No more so you, keep hitting the microphone, <laughs> wanted to go. He wanted to go and then <laughs> also brought their kids. Yes. So now you had two generations where back then you only had the one Plus. line of fans. Absolutely. Right. So that's why I think they got stronger. You had a lot of fans who were Kiss fans who went back. Yes. Even if you were somewhat casual. Then I was, it was like, it was almost like, I remember like, um, I felt like, I don't remember, I'll just use like, when I was growing, when we were growing up, everyone was a Yankee fan. Yep. Everyone was a Yankee fan. We didn't know any Met fans in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. In 86, when the Mets were, everyone was a Met fan. Like, where did these yep. people come from? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Where did these people come from? But, and there were a lot of real, so Super Mario, don't get upset. So <laughs> there, there was a lot of true, there were a lot of true Met fans. Absolutely. But we always know, like when the Rangers went to Stanley Cup, all of a sudden everyone was a hockey fan. Yes. Everyone jumps on a bandwagon. So a lot of people I know during the Kiss yep. reunion were like, ooh, fun thing to do. You know, like this yes. is the in oh, thing to do. And That's these were very casual or they didn't even know, but they were just going. So you had that line of fans. So let me going. ask you this. Let me ask you this. So clearly Kiss is in the Hall of Fame because of the success they had in the 70s. All right, There's no denying that. Mm -hmm. Do you think they make the Hall of Fame without a reunion in the 90s? Or do you That's think great in question. the early 90s, they just kind of fade away and by... I, I think they still deserve it. Absolutely. Right. Do I think they, they make it? That's a that's an excellent question. And I, I don't know if I have an answer for that yeah. because <laughs> it was undeniable at that point right. that after all those years, they get together and they have that kind of success. It just compounded yes. the strength and and of the band and the fandom and the influence. Agreed. So I think it's it really helped them get in by having that reunion tour for sure. Because I also, think. also it actually put them back in the spotlight again for many yeah. years. I yes. mean, by that time, 2014, I think 2003 or four was the last show that an original. Two, uh, October Peter, 2000. Peter. October was the last time the four of them played together. October well, I mean, where, when, when Peter Ace was 2003 in, with three, Aerosmith. Right. Yep. Right. Okay. So that was the last. So you're, you're talking 11 years right. to which, you know, there was an additional original member besides Gene and, 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 yep. and Paul. So, yep. um, and also, I mean, the other thing that you got to say about Kiss is like, as we all know, the fact that the matter is, you know, by 82, they had no, the they had lost Peter and Ace. Yep. 
Yep. And they carried on. I'm going to use my hands because I don't <laughs> do good at math at this age. 92, 2002, you know, 2012. So 32 years later, yep. right? Until they really put out original music because we're not going to we're not going to count Psycho Circus <laughs> for the reasons we know, right? <laughs> as, as an all original Kiss record. Yeah. Um, but the fact that 32 years later, that basically, even if you just say for Again, if they if they really started the album came out in seventy four, right? That's not even ten years right. of right of of original. The only other band I I can say only other but the Beatles were like that to sixty four right. to seventy six years, right? right. Yeah. So and I'm not comparing them to Beatles, so people don't freak out like <laughs> oh the Beatles. Like, no one ever ever yesterday the and get kissed. All right, I understand that's not what I'm saying, yeah. but the fact of the matter is for an eight year period of time, what we always say is the impact. Like one of the things that Morello said, no, Morello said yeah. how many bands you know kids would always say oh we got tired of seeing people like uh, bands with flannel shirts go on the stage and you know yep. you know and there was really nothing like it and that's why when i have a friend of mine or someone who knew who i meet and i say oh your kids fan i said watch this clip but pretend you got to make like you never saw this before right like other bands understand that this did not happen until you're watching this right now right okay that's how i like to present it you know yep. because oh, I, it's so easy to see Tommy Lee on a roller coaster in a freaking, right. you know, the pinks up in the air, like, you know, right. going all over <laughs> yep. the place, you yep. know, I mean, yep. there's so many artists that have done so much since what Kiss has done. Agreed. So now let me ask you, as we look back then on that induction, I was just asking you if you thought the reunion helped solidify their spot. And I, and I do believe that the reunion did help it because it kind of gave some legitimacy to that Kiss wasn't just a band from 74 to 79 that was popular. It kind of made it in my mind like a 25 year thing so then all of a sudden people re realized oh wait they were still putting out albums all through the 80s mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. oh they did have platinum albums in the 80s oh they was mm -hmm. still an entity at that yeah they weren't wearing makeup but oh mm -hmm. lick it up and heaven's on fire and i love it loud i know that was a makeup song you know but um mm -hmm. yeah there was some other material there and then they came back bigger than ever in the 90s so it kind of made it like this couple of decades it made it almost to me absolutely freaking indisputable that they deserve to be in the hall of fame so absolutely. with that in mind and and again thinking about back to that night and, and thinking about where we are now in 2024 bruce kulik eric carr do they belong in with kiss absolutely agreed i think i mean look we know what their tenure you know was in the was with the band yep. you know it was uh basically for eric it was it was a what uh 12 years yep right uh, Bruce, yeah, 11, 12, 11 years. I yeah, think. 80 to, to uh, 91. 90, 91 or 92? 92. No, well, he passed or? away in 91, yeah. Okay, okay, so 11 years. And and Bruce, about the same, right? 80, yeah, 84? 80, 84, to, yeah, he joined. So he started playing with them September of 84, yeah. Mm -hmm. 12 years. Yeah. So about the same for each. Yes, yeah. And just like right now, uh, uh, Tommy and, and uh, Eric Singer should be, you know? I mean, obviously now time has passed and they're already there, but, right. you know, even at that time, Eric Singer was in the band for how many how many years? Even Eric Singer is the third longest tenure of in, in right. Kiss behind but I'm talking about, But I'm talking about at that point in time. You know what oh, I mean? Uh, yeah, I mean at that point he was already back for close to a decade. I think at that point. Right, right, and yeah. he was with Kiss for about four years to ninety five. Let's just say yes, yeah, right. So right. so four years roughly. And, and and then we'll go into you know, and I'm just going to start in with this, you know, the yes. Bruce Springsteen and the and the Eastry band. And if you listen again, I always say if you listen really closely, <laughs> the induction speeches are still going on from '94. Yes, They're still going on. Oh, All right, here, here here's a guy who sewed a button on for Bruce Springsteen shirt. We're gonna <laughs> let, let's put him in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh. It was utterly ridiculous when they started going. It was it was so to me intentional. Take as much yes. time as you want. Yes. You know, we want this to go. We want this to run. This is what I feel. Yes. We want this to run over, you know. And, um, but my point being is that Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band, they had everybody. It wasn't right. his current E Street Band. It was everybody who yep. ever played in the E Street Band. Yep. Okay. And, and it was, and, and the fact that it happened on the same night that Kiss was getting inducted made it even worse for us. Yes. And you and I were fucking rolling our eyes. Like, when is this going to fucking end? Well, that's the you thing, know? and I'm and I'm glad you know it's a good segue right, right. to to that night with the E Street Band. You know, the being in the building that night and all that excitement we spoke about leading up to to going there that night. It, there was a kind of I remember you and I taking a step out. I think when um Cat Stevens was being inducted, 
And that's when we got our pretzel. <laughs> you know, we got, so our, pretzel. We got yeah. our pretzel. And um no I disrespect remember, to, to, to Cat Stevens, by the way. No, no, no. I haven't, yeah, a lot, lot of respect, but I think that's just when we I think he was right after Kiss, if I remember right. And we said, you know, let, let's just kind of step out, let's be able to talk for a couple of minutes about what just happened. Mm-hmm. And let, you know, the we need a snack and let's face it. <laughs> let, you know, let, I always, always want a snack. I always want a snack also. So, you know, it was yeah. a perfect time for a pretzel. But I think yeah. the only reason we stepped out for Cat Stevens, because I, if I remember right, I think he was the next one right up, right mm-hmm. after Kiss. And yeah. um, the only thing is I look back on that night and it disappoints me. So to the point you said about the E Street Band speech is, you know, each member of Kiss made sure that they took their only their allotted amount of time, which I think was like four or five minutes a person, something like that. I think it was like. You know, I think the members of KISS were on stage for like 12 minutes for their for their acceptance speeches. And then there was no performance, not by the band, not a tribute band or anybody else, you know, put, paying homage which they to all, them. Which they, a lot of times they do now. Of course. They did that night with uh, Linda Ronstadt, obviously. Right. She couldn't perform. And, and that was a freaking amazing performance that night with mm-hmm. Joel Crow and Carrie Underwood and um, Stevie Nicks and a few others. I, that, I've, I've watched that performance on YouTube a number of times because that was a freaking amazing performance. But that's the one thing, being in the building that night. And it's a little bit different when you watch what's online, the HBO special or whatever. I felt like we were in that building for four and a half hours roughly that night. And the kiss thing went by like that, a snap Absolutely. of a finger, and it was gone. There was no music played. Mm-hmm. That will forever, for me, taint that night a little bit, especially then when you add in the fact that the E Street Band, their acceptance speeches was had to be close to an hour combined for all of those guys. And then they performed for another 20 minutes or 25 minutes after that. The E Street thing went on for a good hour, hour and a half. And when you're mm-hmm. in the building that night and there's all different bands being inducted and Kiss is in and out super quick, no music, and the E Street band just goes on. And like you said, the first, mm-hmm. still freaking talking. That to me just, I hate to say, somewhat taints the night a little bit. And it, it further taints it when Ace was supposed to be up on stage at the end of the night during like the all-star jam. And they had to cancel that because the damn E street band went so long. So right. there was our chance to see one of the guys, at least from our band performing at least in a cover song or something at the end. And even that couldn't happen. Mm-hmm. And that more than anything is why I get bitter about the E street band speeches. If they wanted to take an hour, an hour and a half and whatever, whatever so be it. Uh, but it kind of was at the expense of something else. I was looking forward to being in the building that night. I'm not talking about just, oh, I'm disappointed I didn't get to see it on HBO. We were paying customers in the building that night. And to me, the E Street Band took that away from us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. I felt like they were picking people through the, the floor, like yeah. new people were arriving. <laughs> like, to, to, I'm like, another one? Where did you come from? <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Do you wish that a... Kiss performed that night, even if it was with the current lineup? Again, 10 years later. I know that night we wanted mm. the original four to play. But now, 10 years later, do you wish at least somebody, some lineup played? Or no. no. Okay. I, I wouldn't want I wouldn't want like um Tommy and Eric up there performing. And I'll tell you why. Because at the bottom, my bottom of my heart, I think it's insulting to Ace and Peter. Unless they both said we don't want to perform, right? Have a have Tommy and Erica. We we we, bl- we have our blessing, which we, we know, know that they didn't want that. They didn't want that. Yep. So if that was the case, yes. But I thought I think it would have been a dig at you know uh, Ace and Peter to go up there and and do it without them. Yeah. Um, Look, I agree, and I didn't know how you were going to answer that because I've never asked you that you know, all these years later. I know that night we were comfortable with the decision. Um, I wasn't sure how you would answer that 10 years later, but I, the reason I'll say I agree with you is because a few years later, I went to another induction ceremony and journey was being inducted yeah. and leading up to that day, there was so much is Steve Perry going to perform. Is he not going to perform? And Steve Perry came up on stage, accepted the induction with the band. Then they started to get ready to perform. And you still didn't know was Steve Perry going to perform. I was in that building and we mm-hmm. still weren't sure. And you see Steve Perry walk off the stage and on L walk out mm-hmm. and I happen to love on L. I think he's the perfect, perfect, perfect singer for that band today. But I will not lie. I was disappointed that night. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, mm-hmm. Steve, where are you going? Come on, at least sing lights. And then you could step off and let on L do his thing. That's fine. Just sing together, the both of you. But, and you just hit the nail on the head. Steve had no problem with that that night. 
Right. That he, was he, his he, decision. He, right. Exactly. Right. That was his decision. In fact, he was nothing but complimentary about Arnell. They took pictures together that mm-hmm. night. Um, I agree with you. As much as I wish there was some kind of kiss music that night, and I just expressed, you know, how I felt, you know, kiss was like there and gone that night. It would have been a slap in the face to Ace and Peter who wanted a play. You know, Absolutely. it's much different than the journey situation. Absolutely. Agree. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just kind of non-kiss for a moment. The other inductees that night, right? We spoke about the Ishii fan. I mentioned Linda Ronstan. Do you remember? Like I think it was Hall and Oates, Pat Stevens, I mentioned before. Was it Nirvana too? Nirvana. Nirvana. Yeah. So it's funny because you said before, you know, Kiss was about, you know, oh, we don't want to see people with flannel shirts on stage anymore. We want to, and th- there it is, maybe the biggest band, <laughs> you yeah. know, in terms of flannel shirts, if you will, getting inducted the same night as Kiss. Mm. You know, so yeah. You remember, which is kind of ironic if you think I've never thought about that until you just said it today. And like, like there it is in in 2014, Kiss and Nirvana, two totally opposite ends of the spectrum, being inducted mm. the same night. But do you remember yeah. anything else about those other inductees and the performances? I mean, I think what it, it was always it, well, especially for Nirvana, we know Kurt Cobain's not coming up on stage. It's right. like well, who are they going to bring up? And then I'm trying to remember, was Joan Jett one of the? I think Joan the, Jett was one. Yeah, yeah, I'll be honest. There was a few different singers. I don't yeah. remember who all so of them I, were. So I had an interest in, you know, because they usually do a couple of tunes, two, three tunes. Yeah. Who were they going to bring up? Just like, as you said, the the uh, Linda Ronstadt thing was very well done. The singers yes. that they had, who you I mentioned, I think you might have left out one or two. I don't know. Yeah, Amy I'm Lou sure Harris. I did. I think Emmy Lou Harris was one. Yes. Of, another one. Yes, yeah. she was. And so, there might have even been somebody else up there. Yeah, yeah. I think Glenn um, Fry was up there, which was, you know, I know the connection, but it yeah. seemed odd him with all the women yeah. up there. But okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just I think it was just the interest in with the other bands. I'm a Hall and Oates fan, a Nirvana yeah. fan, so it was nice to see those other bands get in. You know. Uh, when we had to endure the the whole E Street Band thing, yes. you know, for, <laughs> yeah. so but, it's kind of um, sad because I don't remember, and I you know, like you, I like Fall and Oates. I don't remember their induction itself at all. I remember their performance being underwhelming to me. Um, yeah, but I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember much, and I haven't really gone back and watched any of it. I I okay. casually watched the Kiss thing, but I can't remember the last time I watched. Really, it. Okay. like you, I don't. I don't do every two or three months. Yeah. Have a, an alert on my phone say to watch the Kiss Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, speech. but. But I watched Tom Morello's speech. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Yeah, not not yeah. even the, the band member's speech. I just, yeah. I, I think his speech is just, like I said before, just absolutely phenomenal. But um, yeah. so so kind of just going back for a moment. So now here it is, 2024. You think Bruce, Eric, Tommy, and Eric Singer should all be inducted? Should have been inducted? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, I wish the hall would almost just make it like, you know, everybody who's been in the band is inducted, you know, so that this way you go to the whole thing, you can see the history of the band, right? It's Absolutely. not, it's not only usually about the three, four, five most important They've done members. it for other bands. They've right. done it for other bands that, that didn't even have that kind of time, uh, time and service in a band, yeah. like, like some of these guys, 10 plus years. Yeah. yeah. Come on. And I don't mind. They, the they plaque... inducted the, they put the, uh, I think the original drummer for, for the E Street band before Max yeah. Weinberg. Yeah. Yeah, he played on he played on um you know born to run i don't know he maybe was on two records right what two years right eric Carr, 12, 11 years you don't put him in exactly and 11, i don't mind if, if the plaque had you know like let's just say i'll use kiss as the example paul gene peter ace and like bigger font if you will and then underneath it you have yeah. the other band members with the years that they were in the yeah. band but to me, if I'm going to the Rock Hall of Fame, look, I know Kiss, I know all the members and when they joined and when they left, et cetera. But for that other person going 10 years, 20 years from now, they go and they see a plaque with just the four original Kiss members on. And in their mind, potentially, they're thinking those are the only four guys that were in the band. It's just like what Ace really has said over and over again yeah. at nauseum. Some people still don't realize that that's not him. They, it's, it's Tommy Thayer. Right. They just, you know, they, they you know, I think there are still some people that think that's Ace Frehley. The casual, and, real casual band. I'm and a Hall of Fame induction fans. like this could play into that, where somebody goes there and they see the four names and now they... And they they educate they, them. You get they, educated on, on the history. Yes. Right, right. So to me, that's why I wish... <laughs> <laughs> that's why I wish for all bands, not just Kiss. I wish the Hall would just induct every member. Even go back, you know, so if Kiss was inducted in 2014 and... They got a new guitarist in 2020. Put that person's name on Shit, the plaque. Put Lydia Chris in. I don't know. Put everyone in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> should Anton Fake have a little like asterisk on the bottom? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, they play on two records, right? Two. Did, yeah. No. So you see, in Three, my if mind, you count, if you can count uh, 
Ace of Ace Solo, of album. Solo album, right? Uh, to that me, is a Kiss I, record. Yeah, it is. It is, and, and um, to me, I I don't have a problem with people like that not being inducted, but actual band members. Just my yeah. opinion. I I wish I wish the whole would just change their policy. Just the whole band, all band members. Yeah. Educate the public when they go there as to who the band members were, what years they were in. I, I think that could do do good good service. But yeah, yeah. I, to be clear, I don't think Anton Fig should be included. He's not a member. Right. He played on a record. He's a, he's a, he was a hired gun, yes. session guy. So I'm not. Yes. They, they should not be included. Right. Agreed. Agreed. But I think for you and I, perhaps one of the best memories of the night. <laughs> you know, is the meal beforehand. <laughs> yeah. Whew. Oh man. <laughs> so, so let me just explain the story. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So, we, as we always do, we're, we're trying to figure out a place to eat beforehand. And I don't know if you had ever been there. And I'm like, oh, no, this I restaurant's know. been here for years. I used to go when I was uh, with my family when I was younger, called Juniors. Uh, Junior, they're known for their cheesesteak. Well, little did you know, they're also known for their pastrami. Right. <laughs> and, and I don't, and, and you tell me at that point, had you liked pastrami or? Yes. Yeah. I know. Okay, I, okay. My parents, it, my mom would make pastrami at home all the time when I was okay, growing up. So, and, and as we've known more so in our le- recent years, how we get together during the summer for pastrami fest and you uh, posted K- pictures. Kenobi online. fest. At Kenobi fest. Kenobi, <laughs> Kenobi fest. fest. <laughs> yeah. Kenobi <laughs> fest, which again, to educate our users who just like, or our viewers, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a place called Ben's Delicatessen in in, <laughs> in Long Island. And you're like, oh, you want to go to this place? Ben's Delicatessen. I go, oh, Kenobi's? Right. Ben Kenobi's, you know. Right. So it just we just started calling it Kenobi's. Right. So exactly. So we go, we go to we go to uh juniors. juniors. We go and we we order pastrami. It's joyous, right? And like any good meal, sometimes after a couple of hours you eat it, it starts to repeat on you. <laughs> so you're utterly disgusted. I see you look rolling well, your well, eyes. Hold on, yeah, well, hold on. So we're sitting in the 200s, <laughs> yeah. looking down at the stage, enjoying the evening, enjoying the different induction ceremony point, things. Yeah, right, yes. Exactly. And Until, you, you are to my right, right? So I'm on yes. your left, you're so on my right. Way. But now we're in the midst of the E Street fiasco. You're <laughs> yes. fucking pissed off. You're rolling your eyes. <laughs> And I'm starting to belch up this, 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 this <laughs> pastrami. pastrami sandwich. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, it's like, you know, listen, this is a human bodily function. You're just like, you know, you're doing one of those, you know. <laughs> but then I decide to torture you. Yes. Right? Because I, because I know you're annoyed. So I start doing one of these. And I just see you going, oh. So wait, hold on again. For those who are listening and can't see, what he's doing is he's saying he's belching and blowing it in my direction, <laughs> purposely blowing it in my direction. Like a, <laughs> if this doesn't if this doesn't ever forever change our viewership of, of me as being a chemist <laughs> that's right. as being a chemist oh that's great so what i was trying to do other than not just torture just add a little levity to what was going on because yes. i was so annoyed i was just trying to get a laugh i tried to be distracted by all this crap that we were saying yes and to your you know i guess at my expense at your expense yes <laughs> at my expense now the disappointing thing is my wife and i went to juniors probably about four or five months ago and she was not impressed with the pastrami sandwich so really? just so you know i i did file for divorce because of that i didn't know about that you never sent me the memo i wonder why the last time i was there she wasn't there <laughs> sorry no obviously just that joking didn't, didn't just, just so, joking yeah. how, so and, and for our viewers who don't know this and we may have mentioned it a long time ago we actually had a we didn't call it well. Maybe we did call it Kenobi Fest, but we went to four different pastrami establishments in Long Island, got four different sandwiches, and we didn't know which was what. And we we both tried, and and your wife also had it, and yep. we had a shootout. So yes. and we came up with a winner, and I don't remember what the place was, but the last time you did go to Juniors, which was about ten years later, mm-hmm. how was it compared to what you so, remembered? I thoroughly enjoyed it. Still, okay. I, I would still say it was an A. I'll say an A, not an A plus, but an A sandwich. Yeah. yeah. My wife was not impressed. That was but but she's also a fan of the corned beef too. Yes. Did yes. she get pastrami or did she get corned beef? <sighs> I think she had to get the pastrami if I remember. Yeah. Right. So that might have factored in because I remember she's Factor like, I ain't want corned beef. <laughs> yes. you know I mean? yes. right. And she did that voice also. Yeah. Yes. yes. Please <laughs> give me corned beef like she's a robot. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But people are gonna be like, "What's Brun married to?" <laughs> yeah. 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 Um. So so looking back on that night, how do you rank mm. them? Kiss induction, E Street hmm. Band, pastrami sandwich. Right, those three. 
<laughs> well, obviously the East Street Band's last. <laughs> but you know, Kiss will still it'll still be on, you know, top bill. Still top bill. And you bill. know, I, I mean look, but I did also, I mean, I still did enjoy the as you said, Linda Ronstadt, Cat Stevens, and yes. even though we did get our pretzel, there were other artists that I liked, Nirvana, and I did yes. that also made if it was just the Kiss thing and E Street Band that night, it would have been like, oh, 50 50 you know like the whole night but the fact was, that there was, was the... elo was not that night i think elo no. was the, uh, with journey yeah okay. yes yes um, yes yeah. no look i think the, the whole night to me was great i was so happy to be in the building um mm. i wish the kiss thing was a little bit longer um yeah. like i said even if they weren't going to perform i wish they would have gone over their time on their speeches a little bit i just felt like and i remember saying it to you that night when we went to get our pretzels that um for those who don't know, when we say pretzel, we yes, we do mean pretzel. We're pretzel. just jerks. <laughs> yeah. So um, when we went to get our pretzel, I, I remember thinking like, wow, that's it? It's over already? Like it yeah. just happened so fast. And um, yeah. that's always when I think back of being in the building that night. That's always what I think of. It's just like, if you blinked, you missed it. Mm. Every other band had a musical performance that night except for Kiss. Mm -hmm. Every other band. Yeah. Yeah. You're, that, yeah, I know. I know. Always friggin' nags. But it still was a great feeling knowing we left that building and Kiss was now in the Rock of the Hall of Fame. Yes. That's the bottom line. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's amazing we'll kind of end where we started. It is 10 years later. And I still, like we said before, I'm still very happy that they were inducted. Yes, more and more I, I look at the Hall of Fame as a sham. I, I always did to some degree. Mm -hmm. But Maybe I'm a hypocrite. I'm still so glad they're in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. And I'm curious for the people who are watching this. First off, you know, were you in the building that night, the way Vin and I were? What were your thoughts on the whole evening? You know, were there other parts besides just the Kiss thing that you enjoyed? Um, I'm going to assume most Kiss fans love the Tom Morello speech, but I'd love to hear what people thought about that. But then also, here it is 10 years later. As a Kiss fan, are you glad that they were inducted? And what would you change, if anything, about that night? I'm curious what people Good would questions. think. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious what people would think. Is there anything you would change about that night? Yeah, no E Street Band. <laughs> okay. Here's your choice. No E Street Band, original Kiss lineup performance. Which one do you choose? I would love to wipe that E Street Band memory out of my <laughs> mind forever. And that, you know what? And there are records that I do enjoy. I'm not a huge Bruce Springsteen fan, so it's, I don't want to really disrespect them for the, for what they've done for Bruce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not about that. I'm not saying yeah. they weren't even deserving to be. Right. It's not right. my point. Okay, right. I want to be like, very clear. No, it's about the hour and a half that they took yeah. on stage when everybody else mm -hmm. was, you know, 15, 20 minutes of speeches and 10, 15 minutes, whatever it was, of performance. Mm -hmm. you know, it was completely egregious that they took, you know, three, four times any other artist that night. Absolutely. If not more absolutely. than three or four times, not probably more. five or six times. Yeah. Right. Just absolutely freaking egregious. But um, I'm still glad that we were in the building that night. Absolutely. You know? Wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. And it is kind of sad. I do believe that's going to be the last time the four of them are together in public. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I hope you're, I hope, I hope three months from now, six months from now, whatever it is, you're texting me saying, we got to do an, uh, an episode all four original members are getting together to do X, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. Um, I just, like I said before, I can't imagine a scenario of what that would be. An anniversary yeah. or something. I mean, I know it's just, they just reached the 50th anniversary of the first Kiss yeah. album, right? Yeah, but I, look, that I, hate nice. say, I hate to say it. I think when one of them passes is when the other three will be together. I hate to say it like that, but I think that, you know, and I'm not going to count or, that as the or, four of them being as in the I was room. saying before, one of them gets sick and, and they all go and, and you see a picture of them all together. Yeah. That's what I was kind of alluding to before. You right. know, but yeah. And I, I, hope don't that the, it, that, yeah. I don't want it to be that. No, look, you know? I hope that doesn't happen. I think of, you know, the Beatles and I think of what was it in the nineties when they did a, a song with, with, with three of them together. And obviously yeah. John wasn't there, you know, time waits for nobody and you don't know what's around the corner tomorrow. I hope the four of them do something together, but if they don't, this was a nice kind of fitting ending in some ways, like, you know, celebrating the fact that they made it to the Hall of Fame mm -hmm. after in the 70s, being a little bit of like the laughing stock at first, you know, and um, and all of that. And if that's their final time, the four of them together, like you said, with the big finger up to the industry. Yeah. Well, that's nice. That's a nice way to end. Um, I agree. 
you know, you know, I, I, I just thought of this as we were talking, then we could wrap up here. Um, I was mentioning the speech, the speeches before, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, I still to this day remember Ace Frehley in his speech saying something, he talking about like being whatever it was at the time, 10 years over, 12 years over. And he said something along the lines of, you know, people say, why don't you just stop when you're drinking? And he's like, and that's like telling somebody who has diarrhea to stop shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, only you know, no, freaking Ace Frilly can bring up having a diarrhea during yeah, his yeah. Whole, exactly. whole face speech. No <laughs> one else. No one Absolutely. else. And it's just like such classic Ace to me. You yeah. know? And I think Tom Morello, if I remember right from watching that night, just went hysterical laughing on stage. And it's just like, well, but you know, so that's to me, like I have a lot of fun memories of that night. Mm-hmm. I can mm-hmm. do, if you ask me, what would I do with that? The E Street Band or the Pastrami Belch? Hmm, that's a tough call. <laughs> that, that, that's well, a tough well, call. Well, you're the one who got assaulted. I was the <laughs> assaulty. Yeah. You got assaulted. I got yeah. assaulted. Yeah. So I had a lot of enjoyment in torturing you. You yeah. didn't get any enjoyment of getting blasted yeah. by the I, I wonder what belch. the statute of limitations is for me to sue you for uh, torture that evening. <laughs> All right. That's. I think once 10 years is gone, it's over. That's it? Oh, yeah. Well, well, we're right at the 10-year mark. Ten, it's, called, it's called the 10-year belch rule. Oh, is that what it is? The 10-year belch <laughs> oh, All right. Well, maybe I'll let that one slide then. <laughs> all right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, man. Well, you know what? This is a lot of fun reminiscing about this. That was a fun night. Do you also remember that night, what I sold before the show? Ooh. What you sold. Give me another hint of not what you sold, of where where did you go? I had to meet somebody out in the streets. Bruce Pun. Out intended. on the street. Boy. Oh no, I was doing the Bruce. <laughs> oh, 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 that's it. That's all. Uh-huh. Um met some was I with you when you sold it to that person? You knew about it. I don't it was right before we went to I Juniors. remember waiting. I remember waiting for you by the parking garage, like telling yes. you where to go to the parking garage, yes. but I don't mm-hmm. remember you meeting and selling anything. So I had probably in the, the year before I just got my kiss pinball machine. And the glass had broke, and I got oh, a yeah, German right. replacement. Right. right. I and then eventually so. I, I got remember. the US one. And it was that night that I sold my German um, back back glass for my pinball machine. Oh, yeah. that I don't remember. I mean, yeah. I remember you selling it, but I don't I know why you that. don't remember that. Come on. I mean, I mean, I don't know why I didn't remember the things like, you know, this big, like, <laughs> exactly. I mean, something like, how'd I, you know, exactly. not like I had something in the pocket, sold a keychain, but I, I don't, honestly, I don't remember. Oh, man. And, <laughs> you know, last thing with the pretzel also, do you remember at that time, we, this is before we were doing a podcast, I didn't have my my Facebook page and all of that. And I was trying to entice you that we should do a rate, rate your pretzel website. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your son actually put something very quick yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Do, do you remember the pretzel from that evening? <laughs> These are important things now. <laughs> I do. Mm. I do. I, w- I wasn't staggering. It wasn't a staggering pretzel. No, I don't it wasn't think it was, a staggering it was, pretzel. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't as much syrup as I like. It wasn't <laughs> hot and crispy like I like it, but mm-hmm. it did kind of get us on a, besides the pastrami, a, a pretzel kick. You know? Yes, yes, it you did. Uh, I think that was kind of somewhat the start of the pretzel kick for us. Yeah. So. Well, most times when I would go to a ball game, you know, I, how people always get a hot dog or whatever. I always wanted the pretzel first. Right. I've been doing that for years, even before the kiss. Uh, the okay. I was always a pretzel first guy. Right. Okay. Even now, like at night, I like snack on the pretzel really? sticks or, you know. Do, do you have a favorite pretzel? Because the, these are the important things that our viewers want to know. Well, I mean, we've, we've, we've talked about this in the past, the past um, you know, you go to malls or whatever, you got those Auntie Anne's or whatever. Yes. And yeah. Mm-hmm. I, in, in the establishment of like different type of pretzels, mm-hmm. I think that's like one of my favorites. I you agree. Know? My no. friends disagree with me. My other friends, obviously, um, disagree. We just had a debate about that a few weeks ago. And I said, the Auntie Anne's pretzel is the pretzel to beat. They think it's there too are, greasy. There are a couple of places, especially where I play in Staten Island, where they have, they have called, like pretzel sticks or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're like almost like a sour, and they're excellent. They give you the cheese and the, and the, and the, and the spicy mustard. And <laughs> before every gig, I'm like, dang, 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 dang. You know, like just, you know. <laughs> And I feel a bloated on pretzel, you know, but, but I like that also. I like the various kind of pre- And I know I this I haven't tried. Somebody told me recently, how <laughs> we go on, on a pretzel, too, that, that Wendy's has some sort of burger that's on a pretzel roll. Really? It's yeah. like it's like a pretzel I just roll. went to Wendy's today. I wish I would have Yeah, I think it's like a Baconator with a pretzel, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Now uh, we're gonna see. Now this will be a good test. So we're watching the podcast. Right, exactly. When I go, to, when I go to, to the when, end, when I go to Kiss Unmasked practice next week, uh, and Billy goes, 
You know what kind of pretzel I like? <laughs> Sorry. Then you know he watched all the way to the end. Because it was one one time we were at a rehearsal. Uh-huh. He goes, he was talking about something, and he goes, and as you would say, I was thoroughly towed, and I almost like <laughs> dropped my base. I know? love it. I was like, yes, we've infiltrated. Oh, well, yes. you know, I, I told you I've had probably at this point dozens of people message me privately and be like, what are you and Vince saying? Thode. I've looked it up in the dictionary. And I'm like, no, you're not going to find it there. You're not yeah. going to find it there. Yeah. And what's the proper spelling of it? Like, yeah, I'm not even 100% positive myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but before I, I gave all of the questions for the kiss mm. stuff, so I'm just going to say this since we've really gone off track here. I also mm. want to know what everybody's favorite pretzel is. Absolutely. And what's what's their favorite dipping sauce? If they even if they want a plain pretzel or they like the cheese, right. if they See, like I, the spicy I like, mustard. I like the, I like the plain pretzel. Yeah, yeah. I like the, if you like the no butter, cheese. you know. But some of, you get, some of them, you know, you go to Annie and they got the cinnamon. You know, yes. As I like to say, you get the cinnamon. <laughs> you know, you get the cinnamon. You know, mm-hmm. they got all different. Some of them, they had, I, oh, like an everything bagel pretzel. It's almost mm-hmm. like, the, you know, because I'm a big fan of the everything bagel. Right. So, know, I think, so I think that what this is leading to is we have to start a new podcast. <laughs> All pretzels all the time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, man. Where did you get the best pretzel in your life? We'll, we'll pretzel, just like pretzel. Pretzel, sorry, pretzel. And we'll tour like all different arenas and stadiums. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be better than the rate your pretzel website. Yeah, it's like that. It's like that guy. I forgot the guy. The guy who does the pizza, over. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It goes around, you know. <laughs> yeah, it takes yeah. like a bite of the pizza. We're gonna do that for pretzels. Yeah, pretzels. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I want to make sure my viewers and listeners understand what we're talking about here. Oh my God. We, we've only said pretzels about seventy-five <laughs> times. They don't know what we're talking about yet. Uh, well, I'm gonna guess probably about ninety-five percent of the people are like, okay, I'm done with this episode. Uh, so about ninety-five percent already tuned out. They're like, right, exactly. these guys are just <laughs> stupid. This has nothing at all to do with the Rock and Roll right. Hall of Fame and Kisses right. induction, other than the two jerks had a pretzel that night. <laughs> right. Yeah. During Cat Stevens <laughs> and one full belch is in his other guy's face. Exactly, but all righty, there you go. I look forward to hearing everybody's comments on the Hall of Fame induction and all the different things we mentioned before. I look forward to your comments on the pretzel and the dipping sauce. And yeah. I think, my friend, I'm gonna wrap before we go on another tangent right now. All right, good. All righty, everybody. As always, thanks for watching. I will leave you with double ring up. All righty, there you have it. Once again, we'd like to hear your thoughts and comments on the KISS induction ceremony. It's hard to believe that that was 10 years ago today. Amazing how time flies by. But we'd love to hear your thoughts and comments a decade later, what you thought about that whole ceremony, and if you think that'll be the last time the original four members of KISS will be in the same room together. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock Experience with Mike Brun, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you all next time.